Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of my Laravel API course for beginners. In this video series, I'm going to be covering all the basic information you need to know to start building your own APIs inside Laravel. So in this course, I'm assuming you guys have the basics of Laravel down and now you're trying to learn how to build your own APIs. Okay, so let's get right into it. So first thing first, you don't actually need to create a new project to start adding APIs. So if you already have an existing project, you can follow along. But if you don't, the first step is for us to create a new project or a new Laravel project. So I already have the command here. So I'm going to go ahead and run Laravel new. And this is my project's name. You can name yours whatever you like. Hit enter. Now, you don't necessarily need any starter kits to add APIs, but just to make things a bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and select Laravel Breeze so we have some basic boilerplate, you know, for logging, logout, uh, things of that nature. If you're not familiar with starter kits, you can skip this part or just follow along as I'm doing. And next up for this one, I'm just going to go Blade with Alpine, the first option. It really doesn't really matter which one you select, so I'm just going to go ahead with the first option. I do recommend you skip the API only because I'm going to be covering that again. So we're just going to go with the first option. And I don't care about dark mode for the course. I'm going to select Pest and that's it. So now we should have a new Laravel project. If you already have an existing one, you can skip this part and follow on the next step. All right, for the database, you can select any of these you like. I'm going to go with Scalelite because it doesn't require any setup. And I'm also going to run the default migrations. All right, now with the setup done, let's go ahead and open up uh, this project in our code editor real quick. Okay, guys, so my project installation is done and I have also gone ahead and opened the project in my editor. So before we get actually get started, you might be looking at, if you are looking at some older courses online, uh, you might end up noticing that there is no API.route here. Some, some older courses, I think prior to Laravel 9 or 10, there used to be a default API.php that is no longer here. So the first step we need to do is actually to install API support for Laravel. And for that, we need to actually run a command. So open up your terminal and make sure you have navigated to your project root directory, which is where I am right now. And we need to run the following artisan command. So I'm going to run php artisan install API. And what this command will do, it will add some boilerplate code that allows us to support APIs. It also adds some additional changes that I'm going to cover real quick. It's also going to ask you to publish some new database migrations. I'm going to go ahead and hit yes, do that as well. So once you do that, the first thing you notice is it added a new database migration file. So it's under database migrations. It's this file. So it's going to be create personal access tokens. Uh, we're going to be covering that on later episodes. This is for Laravel Sanctum, and it's going to allow us to do authentication and authorization for our APIs. So it's quite powerful. Uh, one more change that it's going to also do is it's going to add this new API.php route file. So this one is very useful. We're going to actually be defining all our APIs inside this file. Okay, let's get right into it. So now that we have done the initial setup, it's actually very easy to create our first API. It's very similar to how you would do it with normal web.php. All you have to do is just basically do route followed by the HTTP request you want. So in this case, I'm going to go with a GET request. Next up, you need to define your URL or URI. Uh, in this case, we're going to be building something super simple. For the first episode, I'm going to say hello for hello, hello world. And last but not least, here you can either pass in a controller or for now I'm going to keep it super simple and I'm going to have an inline function, basically an anonymous function. So I'm going to say function and I'm just going to define it over here. Okay, on the next episode, we got, are going to have a controller, so don't worry about that. Now that we have defined our route, usually if you have an API, you want to return some sort of JSON in your response. That's actually very easy to do with Laravel. All we have to do is do return response and on this response helper there is a json over here and this will allow you to return json to your clients super easily okay so for the first parameter it's going to be what we are returning right so that's going to be the response of our api and this is going to take an associative array in php and you can return anything you want so let's say i want to return a message and i'm going to return let's say Hello world. All right. Just for now, some basic 
content returned. Don't forget the semicolon. And that's it, okay? This is our first super basic API. So let's go ahead and save this and open this up in a browser. So I have my project open over here. Uh, now, one thing you may notice, if you go ahead and do slash hello, you will actually get this 404 not found, right? Even though if you look at our route, it is actually called hello. So uh, what Laravel does is if you are defining an API inside this API.php file, it will always add an API prefix before all your routes. So it will always be API and then followed by hello. So that's what actually we need to put in. So I'm going to go back and change it up to API, hello. And now you guys can see we are getting actually a JSON response from our API. Now, a question you might have is like, hey, why do we need to put our routes inside this API.php? And why can't I just, for example, go ahead and put it inside this web.php, right? What's the use case? Is it just the prefix? There's actually more than that. So usually if you have an API, it's going to be a stateless request, right? While when you have this you know, like web.php files, it's going to be stateful, right? So for example, the user might already be logged in. They have some sessions. They have some cookies. But when they are using APIs, they're not going to have any cookies. They're not going to have any existing sessions. So it's going to be stateless. And Laravel is going to handle these two routes separately. Also, usually, well, actually not usually, always, by default, Laravel is going to do CSRF authentication on web.php routes. While with API routes, because it is stateless, there is no CSRF protection, right? So if you were, for example, to put some sort of post request or put request inside this web.php and you try to access it or call it similar to like a normal API, Laravel is going to be doing that CSRF protection check and all your calls are going to fail, okay? So it's very important for us to put all our APIs under this api.php file to kind of keep it super simple, okay? And one more change, I'll just quickly show it to you guys. If you go actually under your, uh, under your bootstrap app.php file, you will also notice that now there is this new line over here. So this is actually where Laravel is defining it, right? So all the APIs are gonna be read under this routes api.php file. Now, later on, on a later episode, I'm gonna show you guys how you can actually change this API prefix. This is customizable, so none of, none of these are hard-coded. We can customize them, but those are gonna be for the next episode. So that's it, guys, for today's episode. Super basic. I just wanted to cover how to get the initial setup done and create your first API. On the next episode, we're gonna talk about how to load data from the database and also a bit more complex routes, maybe having like dynamic URLs and things of that nature. See you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.